Come join me on a tour of our autumn greenhouse. Hi guys, it's Jan from Melbourne Food Forest. Today I want to show you around the jungle that our greenhouse has become in autumn. It's getting chilly here now where we are in Melbourne. It's a temperate climate and autumn is really marked by cool mornings and cool nights. Hence I've got my jacket on already. But our tropical plants are still living it up in the greenhouse and let me show you what's going on because the greenhouse really takes on a different character every season so even during spring and summer you know this was filled um, you might remember my earlier tours with tomatoes and capsicum and chilies well now um, the tomatoes have finished off in the greenhouse we moved out the chilies and we've got you know, prepare, starting to prepare the soil for winter and we've got lots of autumn plants that are really starting to produce now. So let me show you around. So two of the most exciting things we've got going on in here at the moment are the vines. It has really taken over. We've got two vines battling it out. So we've got our tromboncino and I'll show you that's climbed all the way across the six meter length of our greenhouse and along this uh, West wall here, we've got our bitter melons, which you can see are really, really starting to produce well as we head into autumn, like it's studded with fruit everywhere. So we will talk about each of those in a bit more detail starting right now. So I'll start with the bitter melon. I mean, this is our second season growing it. And I had always thought that Melbourne where we were is too cold to grow some of these truly tropical vines like bitter melon. But you know, I've spoke to other gardeners and they said, no, it does well in Melbourne. So I've really had to find the right microclimate for our vine before it started to perform this well. I mean, look, let's just take a moment here to appreciate how amazingly healthy and lush this vine has become in our greenhouse taken over this entire wall onto the roof it's looking so beautiful and healthy even as we head into such cool temperatures and I'm not seeing any signs of mildew or the vine slowing down and yes this is a single vine that you're seeing across this six meter wall um, and heading up all the way onto the roof it's magnificent it looks so beautiful here and I wish I could show you in person but this is really the next best thing so bit of gourd also called bitter melon and sometimes bitter apple such an unusual fruit isn't it so this is the chinese variety and you can tell that because it's pale green with blistered skin it kind of looks ugly but beautiful at the same time it's really photogenic um, as a fruit it just so weird looking and um, there's also an Indian version so it did originate from China and India the, the Indian version is more dark green and pointed and looks um, almost angry that one so that one's even more vicious looking than this this has more like jade um, white green skin and um, looks like a blistered cucumber it um, it is a very tropical vine, so that's why I chose to plant it in our greenhouse because we have a very shady yard where it's quite difficult to um, find any full sun spots even in summer. And so a vine like this really adores the heat. And as you can tell here, it's thriving in the temperatures of the greenhouse. So the greenhouse cuts out wind and it creates a more consistent temperature. So it buffers the extreme colds does can get quite hot in summer hence we actually grew this bitter melon as a living um, shade cloth a vine across our western wall to block out the really harsh sun and protect some of our plants in the greenhouse because it can become like an oven here in Australia in our summers and so this vine is our living shade and in autumn 
um, last year we had hyacinth bean, which went entirely crazy and took over the greenhouse. Whereas I think this bitter melon is actually a bit more restrained and a much more appropriate choice. The hyacinth bean covered the entire roof and we had literally no light in here because I didn't have the heart to prune it back as you know it's hard with my plants um so um this bitter melon i just let it take off and it seems to be just the right level of shade um for the greenhouse at this time of year not shrouding it into darkness and you can see here that um pollination i do want to talk about that both with the bitter gourd and with the um, trombocino but pollination can be an issue in greenhouses and that's not because it's fully enclosed, it's not. We have the vents open, we have the door open all the time. Ventilation is so important. The reason that pollination can be an issue is because, um, you know, it's harder for bees and insects to get in here sometimes, especially the volume of insects that you need in order to ensure we have properly formed fruit. So for that reason, this year, this is the first year where, you know, I have started planting flowers in the greenhouse. So we had French marigolds, lining all of our borders we're letting some of our basil go to seed so we're actually trying to encourage the insects and bees to recognize that yeah this is a place i want to be there's food sources in here and so they're coming in eating our flowers um enjoying the honey from that as well as helping us pollinate some of our fruit in here because we've got to attract insects to our yard and you can see here that a um, bitter melon is um has male and female flowers so this here is a female, was a female flower at the end here because it's attached to one of these crazy looking fruit and that's a baby version, teensy version of it. You can compare that to, this is virtually a full grown version, close for harvesting. You can compare the size difference. That's teensy tiny, like you know, half the size of my finger. So that was a female flower and at the end of that fruit and you can see here that's male flower there because there's no fruit at the end it's just a stick and you can do hand pollination so for a while when our pollination wasn't very good we were seeing lots of fruit drop off this is an example of an unpollinated fruit you can tell because the end they start to turn yellow from the end and eventually that will just kind of dry out and drop off so we saw a lot of those and we weren't getting as many bitter melons early in the season so we were hand pollinating so you pretty much just Pick off one of these male flowers and pull off the petals and stick that bit into the female flower you know do the thing and um, you know that helped us have some fruit but I think some bees are getting in now so we're seeing like fruit everywhere um, can you know if you've never had bitter melon before it is bitter but there's a reason for that and I think us humans have really lost touch with that bitter flavour because that is one of the key flavours that we're attuned to and we've bred so many of our fruits and vegetables to just be sweet, sweet, sweet and we're so used to having everything so sweet and when we have bitter stuff it's almost like, oh, it's almost offensive to us whereas bitter is actually a really, really important um, flavour for our health with all the health benefits so bitter melon has been used um, herbally as well it's said that it can fight inflammation it can fight cancer and studies have shown that it does reduce blood sugar so it really helps people with diabetes it's packed with antioxidants and the bitter flavor is what's really powerful about it there's not enough things that we eat that are bitter anymore and it's actually really good for us for our health so with these, um, I'll show you a few more that we've got around here all across the vine. They're kind of hiding in this jungle at the moment. Um, so these are so good stir fried. So the Chinese version that I used to eat growing up, this is that, that white, almost colored one. And you can just slice it up, take out the seeds inside. The seeds are weird looking. They're like brown, hard, um, in a really weird shape. And so we saved some of our own seeds from last season. You cut it open lengthwise, take out any sort of seeds and slice it up and it's delicious stir fried or in soups. Funnily enough, once the bit of melon starts ripening, it actually turns orange. So when I first saw that in our first season, I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening to it? It turns this really crazy orange color and orange, almost red intense color. And so you can 
pick it at that stage too but you want to catch it a little bit earlier than that because then all the flavor and the nutrients are starting to disappear by that point so this is a good size for eating and you can wait till it gets a slightly orange tinge but not too far um, it's really delicate looking the leaves you can see beautiful leaf shape quite fine tendrils and um, the leaves are not too big so I actually think this is a great vine for a greenhouse if you're looking for natural shade because it is just um, you know quite delicate it's not overpowering the hyacinth bean was a bit too much so let's walk in and have a look at the rest of this vine you can see it's fruit everywhere you look there and here got some up here um, some over there and in there babies on the way up let's have a look up here um, some pumpkins here and one hiding behind the turmeric here yeah just starting to get really productive it's actually climbing out our roof vents up there too so um, that I might have to eventually trim back so that we can actually close these vents but we've been leaving them open all summer to autumn for the ventilation as well which is so important but yeah not any signs of mildew and no signs of any pests really tough consistent performer and you can see it's just naturally climbing and growing itself you can see how the vine has just naturally clambered up our greenhouse and used it as a climbing frame and it is the perfect climbing frame it has so many nooks and crannies and and bits of railing that make a perfect frame for a vine to climb up we don't even have to do anything it just does it all on its own and it was just fed once with good soil preparation at the start of the season and we haven't had to do anything since it's just happy here's a quick harvest from today this will be used to make a delicious stir fry tonight with some tofu and heaps more to pick gives us a good basket like this every few days which is wonderful now let's talk about our tromboncinos so tromboncinos are an italian heirloom they're also called um rampicanti zucchinis so they're both a zucchini and a pumpkin or in other words they're both a what's called a summer squash a zucchini or and they're a winter squash aka pumpkin and we grow heaps of these each year because we adore them we grow them outside the greenhouse and then do a late planting in the greenhouse too and the reason for planting them in here is they're less prone to mildew so you can see this one let me show you where it starts so this zucchini or this tromboncino italian zucchini starts from here this is it down here and it's made its way all the way behind the shelf up here up here and you can see in the railings we've been training it all the way along and let's turn around and see how far it's got it such a vigorous climber so that's still it all the way across here a little bit of melon up there all the way across here so here's another fruit here and it's reached up this corner of the greenhouse so it's stretched about six meters already all along the whole length Trombocinos are such unusual looking fruits that their name you know the trombone they're long they're big and they're dramatic they are a form of climbing zucchini and there are other types of climbing zucchini as well we also grow another standard one that looks more like your standard zucchini that don't get this long um, they end up with a, this pointy bulbous end and the seeds are only ever in a this end bit when they're mature so there's no seeds at all along this whole neck which makes it really delicious to us trombogenos actually taste so much better than zucchinis they're um so you can see this is a baby tromboncino you can definitely pick them at this size you can pick them smaller you can do 20 30 centimeters you can pick them this length and um you know when they're green they're sort of pale green with light stripes along the skin this one's gone a bit darker now because it's getting mature they're 
So at this stage, this is when you eat it as a summer squash or zucchini. Super delicious, tender flesh, not as watery as zucchini, no seeds, and doesn't have that zucchini-ish flavor, which you either love or don't love. It's much more mild, really white, tender skin inside. Great for sauces, stews, and roasting as well. So you can see here, pollination again is an issue in the greenhouse. So something I learned about zucchini and squash pollination, which was really interesting and quite mind-blowing when I heard about it, is that pollination is not a binary thing. It's not if pollinated or it's not pollinated. It's actually a question of degree. And this fruit really demonstrates it here. So you can tell that this is pollinated because it's quite a good fruit. But yet, why is this very end bit going yellow? So what that actually is saying, it's, it's a partially pollinated fruit. So it's not unpollinated. If it was unpollinated, it would have turned yellow and the whole thing dropped off. It's been pollinated okay, but not perfectly. So zucchini and squash actually need more than one pollination. So you can't just get a male flower and put that into the female flower. You actually need to get quite a few different male flowers and make sure that you know every bit of the female is pollinated. There's actually degrees of pollination. So you can see this one's an imperfectly pollinated fruit going to be really edible means we need to get onto it quickly we wouldn't be able to let it ripen to this stage because these end bits that turn yellow will eventually rot so we need to eat this green ASAP and the same thing for the one that we've got on the vine over there let's move this way this one too again imperfect pollination and it can be quite hard to pollinate Tromoncino actually because it's um it hangs like this. The flower, the female flower at the end of here faces downwards. So you're kind of pollinating upwards, but the pollen's dropping out as well. So that also means you just need heaps of bees and insects. Or when you hand pollinate, you need to make sure that you do a really good job and you get a few different flowers and um, you know mix them together. But yeah, tromboncino are such a great great one to grow. They're pretty disease resistant. They're really prolific and much more productive than even zucchini. And zucchini is already crazily productive, isn't it? Um, they can grow up to 1.5 meters. We've had ones that are way taller than our kids, which they love because they're crazy looking. They can be a bit curved and kooky shapes. When you grow them vertically, that's the best way to grow them because they look amazing. And they also grow straighter. In this form, when they turn more into a pumpkin, if they're not damaged or bruised and you store them properly and cure it first under the sun and then store it away somewhere cool and dry, they can last for up to a year. They're a decent pumpkin. I think that where they really shine is as a squash or a zucchini. Um, as a pumpkin, they're not the sweetest, but they are, you know, somewhat sweet and with quite orangey flesh. We have used it in place of sweet potato or pumpkin in our pumpkin pies in a sweet dish and it's turned out really nice. You might just need to add a little bit more sugar than you would for a really sweet pumpkin. Um, highly recommended variety and we do a late planting in the greenhouse as well to extend our season well into winter. So we're hoping that this plant will keep producing into winter. They do love a super, super sunny spot, but so does bitter melon, yet we're growing it in a, you know, at this time in the autumn, in a pretty shady greenhouse. We don't get a lot of direct sun at this point as the sun gets lower in the sky. So what that shows is you can grow these things in shady yards, but you do just need to have warm conditions because the warmth also stimulates growth. And so these plants being in our warmer greenhouse, no, we don't heat it, but it does keep temperatures warm overnight. Um, the warmth also helps these more tropical plants to flourish as well. We've got also a butternut pumpkin, so you can see growing through this forest of gourds and, and um, squashes. Pumpkin, there's a bit of melon there, so quite a bit going on. Yeah, this butternut is starting from that corner, this corner of the greenhouse. It's, it's really the battle of the squashes here. So that butternut pumpkin is clambering up this way, going from the opposite corner of the greenhouse as the tromboncino, which is diagonally. We put them as far apart as we can. 
so that they each have their own space but they're <laughs> really meeting up and it'll be really cool once we have all these little butternut pumpkins hanging from the sky as well. Let me just show you a few other things going on in the greenhouse other than our vines which are very much the stars of the show. So we've got our turmerics here, both of them. That one's getting really tall as well. So I moved this one, which was outside the greenhouse, into the greenhouse now because it's starting to get quite cool at night and I want to keep keep the growth up before we harvest the tubers once the foliage dies down. Um, you can see in our garden beds itself, we're actually trying to transition. We're in transition phase, which is always an um, interesting time. You've got your summer plants that are still kind of lingering. You know, do you pull them out? Do you not? I kind of work around them. And I let plants tell me when they're ready to be finished off. So say these eggplants, these are the Lebanese ones. They're just producing flowers and they're still getting going. They're still um, coming up and along. So I kind of just leave them in their place and work around it. Um, these chilies, they were black chilies and they turn red when they're ripened. So they're still going. And um, over here, this bed, we've got a few jalapenos in here still to be picked. Um, this is uh, some of the dried edamame, which I've got to harvest as soybeans. And you can see here in these beds, basil has gone crazy this year. We've got so much basil. I've let this go to seed finally after pinching it out and pinching it out all season to encourage it to be bushy. But it's so, so much basil, um, which is a wonderful problem to have. And I think soon we're going to harvest a huge batch and make some pesto with it. I've dehydrated so much of it and I have jars full of it now, which is fantastic to have basil, fresh basil throughout the whole year. And you can see the soil around it. We've topped up with um, well rotted manure and I've put on a layer of our favourite top quality potting mix as well. And um, we're going to put some compost in and worm castings into each hole once we get onto our winter plantings. One thing I have planted in here for winter already is our pink celery. I had one of these seedlings getting really big and I didn't have anywhere to plonk it. And so this is, I think, our first winter planting that's gone into this bed here. Uh, celery really likes mild temperatures, so it does best in springs and autumns. In our winters, which can be cold, uh, mild frosts we get. I've realized that last year I planted it outside the greenhouse and it really did nothing. It just sat in the ground and wasted space for all of winter. So this year I'm putting it, I've learnt my lesson, putting it in the greenhouse and it seems to be doing really well here. I've got some in the veggie pod too. But yeah, I'm hoping that we, you know, celery really, let's be honest, one, one to two, three plants is enough because you don't harvest the whole bunch. You harvest gradually the stems and we never buy celery ever again. So hopefully this does well here, much better than last year. I'll show you where I planted last year. I had it planted just outside the greenhouse in the beds here. Oh yeah, there's still one here. You can see this is the standard celery, not a, not a pink celery. It's actually getting massive. Um, I planted a row of them out here and it really was just a waste of space in winter. It did nothing in our pretty shady yard. And t um, celery really resists real extremes of cold and hot temperatures. It can bolt to seed. So giving it the greenhouse life this year. The other celery. And the shelves now have started to um, house some of our more um, cold sensitive seedlings. And there's also a few summer things lying around. These are new bearded irises in amazing colours that I've just bought from the flower and garden show so i've potted them up and put them somewhere dry and warm to help them um, grow because when you're propagating things or transferring plants it's good to have a bit of warmth but not too much and i've got this actually this is um, a pineapple that we grew from the top and the roots are all shooting out the bottom now so it means it's really growing and yes you can grow a pineapple in melbourne it just takes two to three years as opposed to up north where you can get them in one season so when we actually bought our greenhouse we went to the showroom to see the greenhouse and one of the things they had growing in the greenhouse um, in one of these wicking pot things was a pineapple and it had a pineapple sticking out the end of this um, 
you know, that's how pineapples grow. It's like a bromeliad. And then uh, the flower or the fruit starts to stick, stick out. So, yeah, so put this in the greenhouse and I'm very excited once this, you know, we can grow our own pineapple. Got some seedlings and um, you know, some extra tomato plants that I'm going to try and grow throughout winter once that we've propagated. So this one's getting quite tall. Some of them are trying to flower, so I pinched off the flowers on them because we want to put its energy into growing a big, strong, healthy root system and just being resilient. I'm not sure if we're actually going to get fresh fruit over winter, but if I can overwinter it and get a head start on the season, which is what I did last year, they were our earliest tomatoes. And we have lemongrass in here, of course, and some holy basil, which is going to seed, and I want to save some seed from that because... I've used up all my holy basil seed, but you can see it's got it's different to normal basil flowers. It looks really, really um delicate, quite impressive purple flowers. So leave that. And down the middle are coming up all our winter seedlings. Been potting them up, and they've come into the greenhouse to kind of get bigger before they're potted out into their future homes. And on this side, similarly. We've all, you know, started to improve the soil. We're giving the soil a rest right now, so I'm not planting straight in. I'm letting that rest and letting everything meld together while allowing things in summer to kind of finish off. In winter, our greenhouse does become quite shaded. It's not our prime winter growing area, but again, the warmth um, really helps. Despite not having the sunlight, having higher temperatures or more consistent temperatures and less wind actually helps plants to grow a lot faster. So we grow all our classic winter um, cabbages, broccoli, cauliflower and snow peas in here. And they do, you know, about as well as outside but then they quickly catch up as we pick up closer to spring because, you know, we get more sunlight here. Yeah, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed a look through our autumn greenhouse. It looks so different and we've got different things going on and trying to take over at this time of year versus spring, the hot, heaty days of spring and summer. It's, you know, you can really feel that autumn air. It's much cooler and more peaceful. I actually love it. It's a beautiful time of year. So I hope you enjoyed that tour. As always, if you enjoyed our videos, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel and share with your friends as that really helps us to grow and enables us to make much more videos like this. So I appreciate you watching and until next time.